What's up guys, Cody with CJC Off-Road, and today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of comparison of should you buy a 2020 Ram diesel or should you buy a 2020 Power Stroke? In this video, we'll be talking about interior, powertrain, suspension, and overall build quality. Okay, so the very first section, uh, interior and kind of interior comfort. Uh, Ram, I think hands down, Cole's new Ram. We spent a lot of time driving that thing back from Dave Smith. Uh, interior uh, like amenities, I guess if you will, the big Tesla style screen, things like that. Um, I think the Ram probably wins in features. And then seat comfort, uh, I'm biased towards my Ford. I, you know, I'd have to actually agree with that. So aesthetically, I'd say the Ram is really where it's at. Uh, in terms of, you know, you just look at the interior, it looks the most modern. I'd say it's, it's, you know, it's far less boring than the Ford interior. It's essentially like a luxury vehicle at this point. I mean, especially yeah. like the Lar Laramie's, the Limited. Yeah, those models, I mean, that is essentially a luxury car, right? I mean, you can jump into a friend's uh, Audi or BMW and what's the difference? Um, but yeah, like he said, the, the, the Ford interior, it's a little dated. Um, we're rolling on the same interior now for what is this year three or four at this point so fingers crossed um if ford if anyone there is watching please do an update to the interiors and uh we would have given you this category with any kind of update but seats in the ford are great but everything else is a little old the screen size has been the same now since what 2011 now it's actually the same size screen so um definitely could use an update on a new ford I'd say as far as general comfort though, the Ford is still probably the most comfortable of the interiors. And just like before, the Ram seats just aren't quite as comfortable. Not, I don't really care about that personally. So, you know, I still prefer the Ram interior. Uh, keep in mind on the super loaded models, the Ford has a panoramic sunroof. Ram still has not uh, implemented that feature. Uh, Ford has massaging, massaging seats on the platinum models and limited models uh, if you order the truck that way. Uh, something also not available on the Ram. So as far as the super premium stuff, I'd still say uh, Ford kind of has the edge. Um, again, missing some of the technology stuff like you know the big screen like the Rams have. But um, it's really, I'd say, a draw between the two. It depends uh, what your preferences are. Some guys can't get past the seats on the Ram. Uh, some guys prefer the big screen on the Ram. I'd say it's all up to preference. Yep, so next, I guess we're gonna talk about power, right? Or powertrain. Uh, you know, and this is important because before 2020, you know, the, the Fords were still quick, but now bring us 2020, these new models of the 10 speed transmissions, and um, we talked about in some of the other videos, uh, hands down, I mean, for the new diesel truck, we'll see longevity wise, obviously they're new. However, I don't think we've had a single customer report. And we have a lot of customers already on 37s, 38s, and even 40s on these trucks. Um, they're insane, right? The speed, uh, one of our customers who just bought a 2020 450, said that he bought the 2020 450 to replace a 350 that was like a 2017 that was deleted and he said that you know side by side he you know he kind of feels that there's not too much of a difference he actually said uh, the 2020 is still faster but then on the flip side it's still a power stroke engine obviously they have the reputation that they have while the new 67 is just a quieter more refined version of the same 67 we've had for years so they did revise the Cummins engine in 2019. Um, we actually have talked a little bit more in depth about that in one of our previous videos. The Cummins has a CP4, which a lot of guys are already saying is going to be a reliability issue long term. But still um, nothing that's come to fruition. Yeah, yet. we have yet to see that. So your mileage may vary. Um, you know, so the Ford obviously relatively unproven transmission with a 10 speed. Uh, Cummins, the CP4. So. I'd say, again, this is almost a draw between the two. Uh, this would probably be a brand loyalty thing, right? Yeah. I mean, a Cummins guy is always going to be a Cummins guy, a la him with his 2020 um, versus I will still probably eyeball the 2020 Fords as long as they do an interior update. I'll, I'll say this for fun factor, you can't beat the Ford. Uh, you know, I've test driven Fords on 38s that would, you know, absolutely smoke my, my Cummins even when it had stock tires on it. So, I mean, you know, around town, fun factor, things like that. I'd say the Ford's still pretty tough to beat thanks to that 10-speed transmission. Yeah. So, yeah, speed response, probably the Ford, while on the coming side of things, you saw the reliability. So, if you care about fuel economy, I'd say the Ram still has the advantage. Um, in fact, uh, driving that truck back when we brought it back from Idaho, I think we were pushing 20 miles per gallon on stock tires. Obviously, that's all gone out the yeah. window with the 38s. 
Um, Even then, though, yeah. the, the those trucks, the Cummins trucks, still on 37s, his on 38s, um, still get better mileage. My non-deleted, completely stock uh, Ford, I think, with my driving around town, it still barely eclipses 13 miles per gallon. So yeah, a lot of the customer trucks that we see, I think they still claim roughly like a 15, somewhere in that range miles per gallon. So yeah, if uh, efficiency is a concern, definitely the Ram's gonna win that one as well. And it's not by much. And uh, again, in regards to the CP4 thing, obviously the CP4 is heavily revised on the new Rams. So me personally, I still trust the reliability of the Cummins engine. Um, again, with both these platforms, though, time will tell. So. Yeah, I just like the 68 transmissions, a 68 from uh, a 2008, 2009 truck. I mean, so many people had issues with those trucks. Um, pretty much move into the 14 and newer trucks, and we hear of a lot less um, issues. And then, you know, I'm sure with these latest uh, 2019 and upper visions, we'll even see less issues as the manufacturers are tired of paying for warranties. So the 68 that we see uh, nowadays is very much different from like a 2008, 2009, you know, 68. You, you read so many issues about those transmissions on the forums and stuff like that. Um, in 2014, they made some revisions and cut down a lot of the issues that we even heard from customers. And then in 2019, I believe there was some, uh, was it the valve body? Uh, yeah, so I, I can't convey this enough. My 2020 truck shifts so much better than my 2014 did. And keep in mind, it's still in stock gear, so I haven't regeared it. Um, it is. It actually feels more like the aftermarket, like, a, like the RevMax transmissions. They made a big change on the valve body and it does feel quite a bit different. So yes, it's still 68 RFE, um, but it has been revised actually, I'd say quite a bit. Yeah, so more of the story, do not fear 68. I know a lot of guys buy 3500s um, because of the ASIN and things like that, because of the kind of horror stories that you would hear with the 68 transmissions. Uh, do not do that, you know, pick the one you want and just, on that note of 2500 to 3500, we're gonna move into suspension um, because that is probably one of the biggest differences between these two platforms. The Ram 2500, like Cole has, has coil springs in the rear, while all of these Super Duty trucks still have leaf springs. Uh, and yeah, if you wanna tackle that one. So, kind of interesting. So, on the Ram, obviously, you have the option 2500 coil sprung rear, 3500 leaf sprung rear. So, you know, for guys that don't intend to tow, I still think the 2500 is where it's at. I didn't plan on towing with my 2020 truck I bought. I really like the ride quality of the coil sprung rear, especially with the Carly suspension added to it. Uh, so if you're planning on upgrading the suspension right off the bat, it is very tough to beat the ride of the 2500s. That said, as soon as you put substantial weight on them, they basically go right to the bump stops. So, you know, obviously that brings the 3500. The 3500, the leaf springs, uh, just like the Super Duties, uh, both these trucks, you can run soft ride leaf springs on them, um, paired with uh, airbags of some sort to supplement the weight capacity. So you can really kind of get the best of both worlds with both trucks. They both run radius arms, uh, so it doesn't, you know, even a basic leveling kit now on the new Fords and Rams, they ride great. Um, yeah, like you said, the, the 2500, if you are not hauling and you are buying a diesel truck because, you know, you saw our videos or you just have wanted a diesel truck for a long time, and now you're taking advantage of the financing they're offering now, things like that. The Ram 2500, uh, specifically on a three inch Carly paint top kit and 37 inch tires is, in my opinion, gonna be the smoothest riding diesel truck out there, period. Again, the guys with just rooftop tents or camper shells, you know, that's not gonna be an issue. It's the guys putting in slide-in campers, trying to haul fifth wheels and that kind of stuff where you may wanna eyeball, you know, a 3500. A slight aside to suspension, uh, we should talk about steering now. There are some fundamental differences in how the steering has been designed on the Rams and the Fords. The uh, Rams do tend to get less steering wheel feedback than the Fords. The uh, Fords get a lot of steering wheel feedback, but I'd say the steering is actually more responsive. So there are some major trade-offs with that. I'd say the factory steering components and the factory ball joints, things like that on the Fords do tend to hold up much better long-term than the Rams. So on the Yeah, and then uh, the 2020 Fords, um, have the steering assist motors that you see next to the coil buckets on the trucks. Uh, we just finished an F450, a brand new 2020. That truck had 37 inch uh, tires, like 22 or 24 inch American forces. And I mean, you could literally steer that truck lock to lock with the palm of your hand, not moving in a parking lot. Like that was uh, an extremely impressive setup. So yeah, like Cole said, 
uh, you know, that is definitely going to be an advantage of the Fords is not only the longevity of the steering components, but just the ease of steering, for lack of better terms. Yeah, the, they do put a lot of, I'd say, leverage in the Ford steering where it can easily turn larger tires. The Rams, you can definitely still tell that you are turning 37s. All right, lastly, just overall build quality, the look of the trucks, uh, our personal two cents. Uh, as we talked about in videos before, I have kind of gone from being someone who had multiple second gens and third gen Dodges to, to be a diehard 6.7 Power Struck fan. I love my Power Struck trucks. Um, however, you know, there are some, some definitely, you know, strong differences between them. Um, both, both trucks actually, uh, for, for goofy factory issues, um, obviously every year they get better. The Fords had the tailgates would automatically drop. Um, Dodge had a recall on transmission dipsticks of all things, right? So. Uh, the beauty of buying a 2020 in either category is a warranty, right? So as long as it's, it's something simple, then hey, I mean, let the manufacturer fix it. We have noticed some funny issues on the Rams. Um, we've seen on multiple customer trucks that have come in. Just weird things like the, like the door sills, um, you know, where it says Ram on them. Several trucks that actually wasn't even clipped in from the factory. Kind of funny, actually. The, was it the passenger side door on, on my 2020? We, we actually have to get it adjusted because it's just about a half inch too low. Just nitpick stuff, like I personally, it, it doesn't bother me. I, I prefer the looks of the Ram, so to me, that's a, uh, I guess, a compromise I'm willing to make. Yeah, but, looks wise, I think the Ram still, uh, like his truck on 38s or a lot of the customer ones to do on 37s, I think those are probably the best looking diesel trucks on the market right now. However, I will still take my interior comfort, uh, my, my tough to scratch paint and all the other things that we've talked about. And uh, I definitely have a slant towards the Ford. Uh, any last things you wanna note? I guess what we can say with this is you won't be disappointed with either truck. Uh, fortunately, we have some great suspension options for both platforms. Um, at this point, the aftermarket support is really st strong for both trucks. Yeah, performance-wise, like a 2020 Ford on stock tires, you could, you're could you probably faster than a lot of cars on the street at that point. So, I mean, you've got that thousands foot pounds of torque or plus or minus a little bit uh, paired up to that transmission. I mean, the truck's fast. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to run out and buy, you know, a couple thousand dollars in delete parts. Um, and heck, you could save that money for some, some parts to get that truck riding a little bit better, right? Or get some wheels and tires, things like that, so. Yeah, one thing uh, they really haven't addressed is neither truck really rides that great stock, and that's yeah. where. Yeah, yep, I mean, fortunately for us, like not too many got, uh, manufacturers have really, you know, even like we talked about in our last Tremor video, those trucks that were supposed to have a soft ride front coil really didn't ride that much difference, so. And today uh, we took a power wagon and, uh, you know, it was a night and day difference from stock ride to aftermarket, so. Yep, even a, yeah, another, a Ram that's supposed to ride, you know, great from the factory. Yeah. There's still a lot of room for improvement, and uh, that's where we can help you guys out. So if you do have any questions on suspension configurations, how to get the ride better, how to get the truck steer better, things like that, comment them down below, shoot us an email, give us a call. We'd be happy to help you guys out. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, both these trucks are excellent options, and uh, if you've been inspired by our videos and uh, want to go out and get one of these trucks, let us know, uh, call us. We've gotten a ton of calls from guys who just can't make up their mind and we'd be happy to help you kind of make the decision. So uh, we don't get commissions from any manufacturer. We're literally just enthusiasts ourselves. It's actually been fun. A lot of local guys have actually asked us what our feedback was on their new truck purchase. They went out and purchased the truck. We've equipped the truck with all the aftermarket suspension options. Yeah. I haven't had a complaint yet, so it's Yeah, been so it's fun. really fun to, to, to bring our passion and our style of builds to all you guys out there. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. Uh, thanks for listening to us for all these minutes and uh, hit the thumbs up button, give us a subscribe and we will keep producing videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.